Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another very detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about showers and storms expected to pepper up across parts of Queensland and into southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. We'll also talk about some showers and storms expected across the tropics and a heat wave expected to extend across Western Australia and then later this week bringing warm temperatures into South Australia, the Northern Territory, parts of Queensland and New South Wales. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated, but starting things off over in Queensland where that thunderstorm risk is. You can see a little bit of cloud streaming into the state right now, keeping those temperatures a little bit lower than normal for this time of the year and certainly going to be providing a little bit more wind as well to parts of the state as well. But don't be fooled, the calm conditions that we're experiencing right now over parts of Queensland, they will come to an end by tomorrow afternoon. In fact, by this afternoon, in fact, we're going to be seeing a line of thunderstorms develop outside of Charleville and Winton. We've had our eye on this system for the last couple of days, but nothing it, it really crazy is expected here. In fact, no severe thunderstorm activity is expected and if we do see widespread thunderstorm activity on that note I would actually be quite surprised. Charleville however and communities around it especially immediately towards the south of Charleville could see up towards 15 millimeters of rainfall before the 9 a.m. on tomorrow morning. A little bit of rainfall as well extending deeper in towards central Queensland out towards Roma, Tarum, Tambo those sort of areas we're expecting some rainfall up there as well and even Rolleston might get a shower or two by early tomorrow morning. This rainfall pretty much peters out by around 8 or 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for central Queensland before moving in towards the southeast of Queensland. No showers are uh, really expected for the Brisbane area, just a couple of light drops of rainfall here and there and certainly nothing in the way of thunderstorms. However, by mid-morning on Monday you can see a line of thunderstorms developing in the wake of this system along a surface trough extending through parts of Queensland and deeper in towards northeast and New South Wales. Now these thunderstorms will develop outside of Stanthorpe and around the immediate southeastern corner of Queensland, south of Chinchilla and Roma and these thunderstorms will rapidly blow up and develop into what will eventually become a line of pulse to possibly supercellular thunderstorms by around midday or 1 p.m. local time. The severe thunderstorm risk for Monday afternoon has once again been lowered. I'm not expecting a widespread severe thunderstorm outbreak. However, in saying that, I would be surprised if the severe thunderstorm warning or a severe th thunderstorm warned thunderstorm did not blow up somewhere around in June or Roma. That would be a big surprise to me, especially at around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. I would expect at least one or two severe thunderstorms with heavy rainfall, large hailstones and damaging winds to be in the mix outside of Injun or Tambo and a couple more thunderstorms expected to extend across Chinchilla, Kingaroy across into the Sunshine Coast outside of Gympie and then into the southeastern corner of Queensland like I said outside of Stanthorpe, Warwick Toowoomba, uh, even out towards Bow Desert in the south uh, western suburbs of Brisbane and some of these storms extending into the northeast of New South Wales as well outside of Grafton and Coffs Harbour. Once again severe thunderstorms only look possible outside of uh, Injun or Tambo or Tarum it, it, by extent they're possible across all of southeastern Queensland tomorrow afternoon, but where they're most likely is in those locations that I've just mentioned and highlighting with the cursor right now. Severe thunderstorms in the immediate southeastern corner of Queensland look to be really unlikely at this time for tomorrow afternoon. But again, there is always that risk. It's peak thunderstorm season at this time. There's going to be ample energy in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the most of. This is certainly what I would classify as a thunderstorm outbreak, but severe thunderstorms not so much in the mix. Still though, make sure you are staying prepared for severe thunderstorms, especially damaging winds, because the risk of damaging winds is anywhere with these thunderstorms, so batten down the outdoor furniture, stay inside during severe thunderstorms, get yourself off the road or reduce your speed when driving. Large hailstones look possible further out to Queensland, so make sure uh, property or precious property is moved in, in, um, inside. Same with livestock, moving it, them into a shed to remove the risk of uh, losses due to hailstones, large hailstones at that, and also with a damaging wind threat by extension, you have the risk of flying branches and flying debris moving around in those thunderstorms. So there is always the risk with every thunderstorm, but in terms of risk in comparison to what we saw last week, it's very minimal at this time. Those thunderstorms continuing outside of Warwick and Toowoomba late into the evening, Those all those thunderstorms pretty much peter out by around 9 or 10 p.m. local time. A line of thunderstorms will extend further north up towards Emerald, Dingo, Biloela, and even out towards Bundaberg on the central Queensland coastline. But in terms of rainfall, we're really not expecting anything for the Capricorn district, unfortunately. They're parched for some rainfall at this time, but in terms of rainfall, really can't be expecting anything. Now, what I have also noticed on the uh, forecast, and I saw this yesterday as well, but I forgot to make a mention of it, was a line of thunderstorms developing outside of Charters Towers later on into the evening. And there is ample energy for these thunderstorms to make the most of. In fact, there is a bit of a surge in convective available potential energy later on the afternoon, uh, later on the evening 
evening rather, and conditions do look good for some thunderstorm development later on in the evening, probably closer towards midnight local time. And there is other models supporting this forecast as well, so we will keep a very close eye on things here. Outside of Matabara, Huendon, Chartist Towers and Moranbar, kind of in this little uh, box area here, we could be seeing a line of thunderstorms develop later on into the evening. And just looking at this forecast here, these are the most intense thunderstorms of the night according to the Eastern Road F. So we, um, for residents outside of Chartist Towers, Glendon, Moranbar and Claremont, just keep a very close eye on the radar imagery later on Monday night. We could be seeing some strong thunderstorms fire up in your area. But again, we will look at this in greater detail tomorrow morning. Now, in terms of rainfall, there really isn't too much on the cards for the remainder of the week, Tuesday and Wednesday, but the thunderstorms do pipe up again on Thursday as a deep low pressure system moves across Queensland and into New South Wales. You can see it here, a pressure of 1,005 millibars. That's quite a lot lower than normal across parts of Queensland, and that's going to promote a thunderstorm outbreak across parts of central Queensland and then along the Sunshine Coast and down towards the Gold Coast as well. We're going to see some thunderstorms fire up into the afternoon of Thursday. By late evening at around 7 or 8 p.m. local time, we're going to see a line of thunderstorms extending between Dingo down Biloela, Edders Void through Kingaroy and down towards Toowoomba, Warwick and Stanthorpe, just inland from the coast, keeping themselves uh, on the other side of those coastal ranges. So communities and big cities such as Brisbane, the Gold Coast, and then along the Sunshine Coast up towards Harvey Bay, Bundaberg and Gladstone, and even further north up towards Rockhampton and even Mackay. Even though they have thunderstorms inland, they are unlikely to be impacted by these thunderstorms. However, later on in the night, we do see a bit of a squall line move closer towards the coastline. This is a complicated forecast here and you can see there is a lot of moving parts to this and two separate severe thunderstorm outbreaks kind of just become one by the late evening with a bit of a squall line racing towards the coastline by around midnight or so. So there's still a lot of detail in this forecast that needs to be ironed out but unfortunately for communities and cities such as Ogmore, Rockhampton and Gladstone I think the rainfall is going to be kept at a minimum next Thursday and Friday just from these thunderstorms which is unfortunate because as we've talked about time and time again they do desperately need that rainfall. Early Friday morning in similar fashion to what we saw last Last Thursday uh, and into Friday morning, we get a line of thunderstorms developing later on into the night and very early on in the morning outside of Brisbane. This is a very weak signal of a thunderstorm outbreak again later on in the night, but I thought it's worth mentioning because it is a very similar setup to what we were talking about in uh, last Wednesday or last Thursday's forecast update. And there is going to be ample energy for these thunderstorms all throughout the night and to potentially go severe across the Sunshine Coast and into the Brisbane area as well. But more severe than that, we do actually have an outbreak of expected severe thunderstorms storms on Friday the 1st of November, a great way to uh, welcome in the official start of the wet season for the southeast of Queensland. These thunderstorms look very gnarly indeed, and by around 4 or 5 p.m. local time we're likely to have uh, severe thunderstorms dominating the Brisbane metro area right up the Sunshine Coast as well, extending as far north as about Gympie. It's just in this small area here, which covers the Sunshine Coast, the Brisbane area and the Gold Coast area, we are expecting multiple severe thunderstorms to have matured, and they will be providing conditions such as damaging winds, heavy rainfall, large Hailstones. I think the tornado risk, just considering the lack of uh, upper level wind shear, is pretty minimal on Friday. It is always a chance at this time of the year in southeastern Queensland and across New South Wales, but tornadoes are pretty rare across parts of the southeast of Queensland. They more likely happen further inland towards Charleville, Roma, that sort of area, out towards Tambo, just in this big flat expanse of land across central parts of Queensland and into New South Wales. They are much more seldom to occur across parts of southeastern Queensland, so it's not so much a threat that we have to be worrying about. I just thought I'd clear that up for future forecast updates. But yeah, certainly some heavy rainfall expected nonetheless from these thunderstorms and a lot of energy for these storms to make the most of on Friday night into early Saturday morning. So a widespread outbreak is possible with a lot of thunderstorms expected. Same deal for Saturday, more thunderstorms firing up, but you can see just to a lesser degree than on Friday. And Sunday, it looks like we get a bit of a return to the calmer conditions. Still though, those thunderstorms dominating the evening hours throughout Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next fortnight. Interesting weather for Queensland, same story pretty much for the northeast of New South Wales, but there's really nothing in the way of thunderstorms extending further down the coastline. We could see a little outbreak of some pulse thunderstorms outside of Sydney by tomorrow afternoon, and I also thought it was worth mentioning that uh, we could also be seeing some showers as well across the northeast of New South Wales on Tuesday and into Wednesday, but nothing really crazy in the way of rainfall expected there, just a couple of millimetres possible. Showers and storms all 
also possible along the New South Wales northeast coastline, north of Newcastle, basically on Friday with the thunderstorm outbreak in Queensland. But in terms of storms for New South Wales, it's looking pretty boring all round, unfortunately. Rainfall accumulations kind of highlight that point as well. Although there are some good accumulations, the bulk of the rainfall remains in Queensland, and unfortunately New South Wales is going to have to wait a couple more uh, weeks until they receive their proper big storm outbreaks as well. Now in terms of a tropical weather update as well, it's the same old, same old as yesterday. You can still see those thunderstorms being pretty persistent across parts of the Northern Territory and into WA, uh, especially across the Kimberley region. I did highlight the risk of some thunderstorms uh, breaking out later on this afternoon and evening into the Kimberley. So, And I know there are actually a few uh, mobile storm chasers up there this time of the year up in the Kimberley region. It's perfect time to be chasing. The roads are still in good condition because there hasn't been too much rainfall, but there's a lot of thunderstorm activity up there. Today is going to be a fantastic chase day outside of Derby and Fitzroy Crossing. There's going to be a lot of thunderstorms firing up there. We'll also likely see some strong ones firing up between Fitzroy Crossing and Katanara. And I know it's very naive of me to say that this is uh, very easy to traverse. I mean, the distance between Fitzroy Crossing and Halls Creek on its own is about an hour or so. So if you're based in Kununurra, it's probably about a three-hour drive to get down towards Fitzroy Crossing and probably a little bit more than that as well. But yeah, it certainly looks like it could be a good chase day outside of Broome Derby and Fitzroy Crossing tonight, just with these thunderstorms that are expected to fire up. Early next week as well, we do have a couple of thunderstorms expected across parts of WA and into the Northern Territory, typical for this time of the year. I did highlight yesterday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to see a big thunderstorm outbreak of pole storms across the Northern Territory and into parts of WA, especially along the coastline and to the northwest of the Northern Territory. Darwin could actually receive some very good rainfall on Thursday night into early Friday morning. So this is certainly something that uh, will uh, gather a lot of attention from the forecasters and people interested in the weather. This looks like it's going to be the first true day of some proper thunderstorms firing up, and it's going to be a great way to welcome in the official start of the wet season as well. More thunderstorms pretty persistent throughout Friday and into early Saturday morning as well, and then a couple of days of dry weather up in the Northern Territory. Far North Queensland, I'm not really going to give too much time of day for them. They do have some rainfall on the forecast, but there's nothing significant at all, and I mean 50 millimetres. We're wasting our time talking about that for the most part. They do need the rainfall up there. However, there are a couple of areas that are starting to go below average in terms of rainfall, but the far North Queensland coastline around that Lockhart River, north of Mumba sort of area, looks to be very wet still. So uh, the rainfall there isn't as welcome as it would be for areas such as the Atherton Tablelands, which do desperately need that rainfall. But yeah, it looks like for the most part, Queensland could do with a little bit more rainfall. The Northern Territory in Western Australia, however, still substantially above average in terms of how much rainfall they have at this time. So that is absolutely great to see. It's been a great start to the wet season, and I reckon the wet season is going to continue on this pace to be a lot above average in terms of rainfall across parts of the Northern Territory, WA, and for a lot of Queensland. And before I finish off this video, I would like to give a brief temperature forecast for parts of Western Australia. We do still have that heat wave expected. However, the forecast has been knocked down substantially for Perth, which for the most part is good news. People aren't really ready for that 40 degree heat, uh, heat to come through. And I know a lot of people are excited about it, but as very typical for Perth, once that first week of really warm weather comes in, we're just begging for the cold to return. So I think people subconsciously still want a little bit more cold weather to come through, but don't be fooled. It is actually still going to be quite warm. 34 in Perth on Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be slightly cooler, expecting the top of around 32, though southerlies should keep things cooler than expected. Uh, Thursday as well, that's going to be the hot day. We are expecting a top of at least 32 degrees and possibly up towards 36 if some forecasts do uh, materialise. But what's actually happened with this forecast here is you can see the trough line, which we were expecting initially to extend down the west coast, hence west coast trough, and that's what provides those heat waves for the southwest of Western Australia. You can see it's moved substantially further inland, and in fact is tracking across parts of the weed belt, and that allows the winds to swing around from the west and the southwest for the Perth area and parts of the coastal areas, which gives way to those sea breezes. And considering we're going to be having a sea breeze for the majority of the day for, throughout Wednesday and Thursday, those temperatures should be kept a lot milder than what was initially expected. This West Coast trough and low pressure system, however, is relentless on Friday. You can see temperatures well into the mid-40s for parts of the goldfields and the wheat belt. And then further north up towards Marble Bar and Port Hedland, you can see temperatures rising well above 45 degrees, up towards 46 and 47 degrees in some locations. That's what I would class as a super hot day for the northwest of Western Australia into the Pilbara region. 46 for pretty much anyone is more or less bordering on the verge of unbearable and it sticks around as well. Friday, Saturday and Sunday outside of Marble Bar expecting temperatures to remain above 45 degrees Celsius and that continues deep into Monday and Tuesday as well. It's fashionable for this time of the year for these temperatures. It happens every single 
day pretty much from now on for the next couple of months where marble bar is above 40 degrees celsius so it is still stock standard weather but once we start touching 45 and 46 degrees that's hot for pretty much everyone and anyone that says our oh, 46 or 47 is normal well the average temperature for marble bar at this time of the year the average daytime maxima rather is about 36 or 37 degrees celsius in a couple of weeks it will rise to about 39 so anything above sort of 42 is still quite a way above average and when we're talking about temperatures up towards 44 45 we're talking about temperatures between 6 and 8 degrees Celsius above average. That is what I would class as pretty pretty damn warm for parts of Marble Bar, especially when we're talking about temperatures nearing on 50 degrees Celsius. Those warm temperatures also extending towards Queensland and parts of New South Wales as well. We're going to have a very complicated weather forecast to give next uh, weekend, just with the amount of low pressure areas and troughs extending across central parts of this uh, nation. So it will be a very difficult one indeed, and I'm not even going to waste your guys' time talking about it because I could talk about this for hours at this time. But yeah, just taking a look at this, warm temperatures is expected by next weekend into early next fortnight for parts of Queensland and into the parts of New South Wales as well. Both states expecting daytime maxima into the low to mid 40s, so very warm indeed, and we will keep a very close eye on this aspect of the weather forecast. But yes, really starting to waffle here about the temperature. If I have left anything unanswered, especially about those thunderstorms across southeastern Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. And I thank you so much for all the recent support on the channel as well. It has been much appreciated. We steamrolled through 20,000 subscribers no problem and it's now a wonder if we could get to 25,000 by the end of the year I reckon with one big push we could most certainly do it but yeah this is your channel for all things thunderstorms and weather across the nation same to deal with cyclones so if you aren't subscribed already then please consider doing so a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye